Over the past few years, mirrorless cameras have become way more popular, also in the professional market. And if I go outside taking pictures of birds or landscapes, I see more and more mirrorless cameras and less and less DSLRs. And there's often the question, are DSLRs dead by now? And even though this might be an interesting topic for discussion, I think more important is, should you still buy a DSLR? Believe it or not, I get asked this question quite a lot when I'm teaching like more beginners workshops and people either have no camera or like a 10, 15 year old camera and they want to upgrade and they're not sure what to get. And I can already say in like 95% of the cases, I would recommend a mirrorless camera, but not always. In this video, I want to share with you my thoughts on this topic. Since mirrorless cameras don't have this flapping mirror anymore or a painter prism on the top for the viewfinder, they can be built much smaller and lighter. And I think especially for beginner photographers that want a new camera and don't want something big and bulky, they really appreciate this and this might be a very important factor. And it doesn't end with the camera. You often find that mirrorless glass is smaller and lighter as well. So I think that's a really important point to keep in mind. The next big advantage of mirrorless cameras is certainly that they have an electronic viewfinder. I know many people like an optical viewfinder and I also enjoy using it on the 1DX series or on the 5D Mark IV. But once I had the R5 in my hands for like two or three hours, I just didn't want to go back. The electronic viewfinder just offers so much more customizability. You can put the histogram, shooting information, and maybe most importantly for me, you see like in life, how bright the image will be. You see if it will be underexposed or overexposed. Again, you have the histogram for that, but you also see it visually quite well. And I think this is a huge advantage, especially if you shoot under conditions where the light is changing. And even more, of course, if you're a beginner photographer. So therefore, I really don't want to go back to the optical viewfinders of the DSLRs, not even of the one of the 1DX, which was an excellent viewfinder. But keep in mind that if you're a beginner, the viewfinder of like a Canon 650D or a Nikon 3300D, they were never so good to be honest. They were quite small and dark. And especially if you try to experiment a bit with depth of field, uh, shallow depth of field, it gets a bit hard to see what's in focus and what is out of focus. So here I think an electronic viewfinder is so much nicer. The next important point is of course the autofocus. I still teach in my workshops how to move the autofocus point around, how to set it on the like on, on your subject could be a head or the eye of a person can also be the petals of a flower or whatever. But with mirrorless cameras, I also encourage them to try the eye autofocus because sometimes it works very well. And with certain cameras like the R5 or the Nikon Z9, some Sony cameras, it works like very well 95% of the time. And Again, I think it's crucial that you still know how to put your autofocus point around, but for tracking subjects, if we go out and we try to track like people on bicycle or cars, having this subject detection makes life a whole lot easier. And again, for a beginner, this is maybe something less to worry about. What goes actually a bit hand in hand with the electronic viewfinder and how mirrorless cameras are built is that you can use the back screen of the camera without any disadvantages that you had with the DSLR. So with DSLR cameras, at least with most of them, the autofocus was slower or at least the frame rate was slower. And with mirrorless cameras, you don't have this anymore. You can use the um, electronic viewfinder or the back of the screen. It doesn't change the performance of the camera. And most of the mirrorless cameras also have like these flip out screens that can be articulated. So for some other shooting positions, it's very nice. And I think I have the experience at least that with these flip out screens, people try to yeah, take some new perspective, new angles. Whereas if they really need to go down with the eye on the viewfinder, they stay a bit more conservative, let's say on the perspective or the viewing angle. And if you plan to shoot some video as well, here mirrorless wins hands down. They usually have much better tracking with the autofocus and you can also th shoot through the viewfinder, which is so nice because especially if you have a bit of bigger lens or outside it, the sun is maybe hitting your scene too hard, it's really not so good anymore to shoot with the monitor. And here it's very nice if you can actually shoot through the viewfinder. 
So far, everything points to buying a mirrorless in all of the cases. So why should you still buy a DSLR? Well, there is one thing, mirrorless is more modern technology. So generally the prices are a bit higher, but we need to say that with newer mirrorless cameras, I take the example of Canon, like with the R10 that they announced last July, the prices have dropped. You can in Switzerland buy them for around 800 US dollar with an included kit lens. So that's really not so expensive anymore. Not really more expensive than DSLRs were back in the days. So I think now we're at a point where even to beginners, I can really recommend mirrorless cameras because the price is not an issue anymore and there are so many advantages. But if you remember the beginning of the video, I mentioned that for some people, I might still recommend buying DSLRs. So who are these people? I think this is if you really want to go on a low budget. Um, if you cannot afford an $800, $800 for a camera with a kit lens, um, here I think if you go to the used market, DSLRs are still cheaper. And here it really depends. If you want to have something that works easy, you have all the benefits with uh, easy exposure, this and that, I would really say save a bit more and wait for a cheap, um, until you can afford a cheap mirrorless camera. There will be even cheaper models coming in the future this year for sure, not only from Canon, but probably only Nikon, Sony, Olympus, we will see. I would really save a bit and wait for this. But if you already have some experiences and you really want a cheap new body, maybe your old one just died and you do landscape photography or something where the autofocus is not so important, then maybe by looking into a used DSLR, you can really save some money. And to be honest, in landscape photography, I still think the advantages of mirrorless cameras are not that big because over the view, over the back screen, over the monitor of a DSLR, you can still have the live view where you have the histogram, where you see the exposure and so on. So I think it's a bit tricky, but for some people it could still be worth it. For the vast majority, I would highly recommend mirrorless these days.